been at poetry wise um not only for its like radical accessibility centering of femme voices and um folks of marginal gender identities but also just like the like people show up for each other here and I'm so stoked to see some familiar faces and to see some new faces so um, today we are doing a workshop on making room for pleasure in the body and I'm gonna do a quick quick screen share um, thank you all so much to everyone who's come uh, a reminder for folks that like you can totally take your time um, through this workshop and everything is optional so we're gonna have opportunities to check in and ground as much as we can um, oh Oh, like it. there we go. Awesome. So yeah, like I was saying, everything's optional. So I encourage people to go at their own pace um, through this workshop, though I've tried to center it more on pleasure um, than like exploring the parts of us that hurt today. Because I don't think that we have enough opportunities just to like celebrate each other and like celebrate ourselves. So I highly, highly encourage us to like get in touch with those parts. Uh, of celebration that often I feel are neglected. Um, I do that often myself as a person who like, my trauma comes out as like working and like dizziness. Um, so I hope this can be an opportunity for us to slow down. Um, and with that, I'd like to start a land acknowledgement. So I'm in Toronto, um, which is known as Toronto by settlers, uh, the District One Spoon Territory. Uh, it's a, tre a treaty between um, all of these nations and more that are um, war passer through pastors, people who passed through this land, but also the people who were situated along the Lake Ontario waterfront for a very long time, specifically the Anishinaabe people. So I'm going to read out the names of these folks. Um, usually only a couple of these names are said in the um, late acknowledgements that are given in Toronto, but what I'm learning now more and more is that like there are the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe, and then within each of those like nations, within them so I'm going to name them all so within the Okoyomwe tribe there's the Wendat, the Patoon, back of the Erie and the Neutral and the descendants of the Wayondat, the Huron and the Wendake uh sorry the Wayondat and then the Haudenosaunee um, composes of the Mohawk, the Seneca, the Oneida, the Onondaga, the Cayuga and the Tuscarora and then the Anishinaabe um, comprised of the Algonquin, the Ojibwe, the Odawa, Slu the Potawatomi, the Chippewa, the Nehewa Cree, and the Fox people. Um, if you're interested in learning more about those folks, I'm going to stop my screen share for just one second, and I'm going to drop some links um, because right now there is um, unceded land um, conflicts going on, specifically in Six Nations, which is close to where we are. Um, sorry, I'm just going to do that. Um, right now, Indigenous folks in my territory are fighting for um, rights to their land at this moment, um, and their people are being arrested. So I'm going to link this. Um, it's called 1492 Land Back Lane. Also, if you're interested in learning more about Anishinaabe people, and also just like how seasons are fake, like four seasons never existed on like this like um, East Coast, like kind of Northern land area. Um, there's multiple different kinds of seasons in this book here that I'm going to link is a free PDF download. Uh, it's called Eating with the Seasons in Anishinaabe Great Lakes Region. I'm um, going it gives you like a breakdown of different Anishinaabe seasons, but also recipes that go along with the indigenous foods from that nation. So if you're interested in learning about more, more of the land that I'm currently situated on, check that out right there. Awesome. Okay, now getting back into, into the us, into the we. So, hey y'all, I'm Cass, um, full name Cassandra. Uh, I use they and she pronouns. I am a master's of social work candidate at York University. I've been a poet in the FEMS community for a while now. Um, I'm hoping we can all also introduce ourselves and I want us to tell, I wanna know one moment of aliveness that you felt this week. Um, and aliveness is going to be a, a, a central theme in the work that we're going to be doing today. Um, so one moment of aliveness I felt this week was my best friend Tui and I, we went into, uh, went for a walk in the woods, but it got super dark. And then we started talking about like ghost stories and then we scared each other and I like, scared myself and like we collectively ran out of the forest. And, like there was no danger, of course, but I felt like alive with excitement, alive with joy to be there with my friend, and also alive by like a fear that I chose. You know, like a fear that I brought on for my own excitement versus a fear that I knew would cause me harm. Um, also, please name your access needs when you're in this space as well. So um, I'm going to just name people uh, who I see in order on my screen to give their names, pronouns, access needs, and one moment of aliveness. Cool? Awesome. I can't like see everyone right now but I'm gonna do my best. So we have um, 
Sin, would you mind uh, starting us off since you already spoke and then I'll keep going in order? Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, hey, I'm Sin. I use all pronouns, actually, um, so I recently realized that I'm gender fluid. So shout out to coming out. It's fun. Um, one moment of aliveness this week. I got to see my alma mater was doing a social justice conference thing and, and it was all free and virtual this year as well. And so this is Westchester University and uh, it, uh, I got to see Angela Davis, Dr. Davis speak and be keynote and it was awesome. <laughs> and this has also been obviously a moment of aliveness, but um, I'll say a shout out to someone else who's actually like seminal in the Philadelphia poetry scene and is phenomenal. So, hey, Jasmine. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Jasmine, she, her pronouns. Um, I guess a moment of aliveness. This morning, me and my fella made um, pancakes, and that was nice. And was that it? Yeah, that was it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I had like a little bit of a, of a glitch here, so I'm just trying to reorganize my screens. Um, Abby, can you go next? Uh, it seems like there are two of us, but I can start and make Oh, it. Abby Blant, yeah. Yeah. Hello, uh, I'm Abby Bland. I'm uh, My pronouns are she, her. I'm a poet in Kansas City um, and a moment of aliveness that I had this week was actually like my partner and I we made burritos and by we I mean he made the burritos and I got to just sit there and like be cared for and that was pretty great. Wow that is awesome burritos are aliveness I agree. Um, active listener I'm silly. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes, that's what that means. Okay, so maybe we can start with Angie and Eva and move on. Cool. Uh, yeah, um, cool. So my name's Angie. Um, am I frozen? I have a feeling. I'm good? Okay. Um, I use they, them pronouns, um, a moment of aliveness. Yesterday I saw the Savage X Fenty runway and oh my God, I, one, so happy to take a moment for myself, two, so happy to witness such amazing stuff happening. So yeah. Thank you. I agree. Fashion is aliveness, 100%. Um, Iva, Eva. Hi, I'm Eva. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and a moment of aliveness that I had this week was um, I'm uh, involving myself with politics and campaigning for the first time ever in this life and working with Planned Parenthood. So I'm actually organizing an action call right now and just um, surprising myself with how able I am to reach out and talk to people when that's something I've always struggled with um, in my life has just made me feel very alive and very um, much stronger than I have. Yeah, thank you. Community action is aliveness. Justice, aliveness. I agree. Jenny, can you go next, please? Hey, um, I'm Jenny. I use she, her pronouns. And a moment of aliveness this week has been um, my partner and her mama and I have made a lot of applesauce. And that has been really fun. Mm, delicious. Uh, and like communal collective cooking. Mwah, chef's kiss. Thank you. Uh, queer applesauce. Yes. Queer applesauce. My favorite kind. <laughs> Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Um, Katie, I use she, her pronouns. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I've had a few moments of aliveness this past week. Um, I think all collectively having to do with poetry. I think the past year has been really hard in terms of like connecting with writing. And this week I had like, I watched a slam feature at my alma mater, like virtually. Um, there's a workshop I went to and then there's FEMS and then like, Fence continuing and it's just like that's making me feel very alive in that way to like be in the community 
in that way and like be back in writing and immersed with like people who like are all holding space for each other in that's such a like wonderful wonderful way so yes yes to community yes to holding space and yes to immersion we love being immersed in an experience i 100 percent agree that is aliveness chris how have you been feeling alive wise hi um i'm chris i use she her pronouns um what came to mind first for me with that question was just um being spending a lot of time outdoors yesterday with my family and it was um my favorite kind of fall day which is one that's very warm like it's not very cold yet mm -hmm. so just feeling the sun on my skin and being present with like trees and flowers and stuff like that and being with my family Yes, transitional seasons, outdoors, warmth of the sun, 100% agree, alive, alive, alive. Hey, Emil. Hi, cuties. Um, I'm really excited for this workshop. Um, my name is Emil. I use they, them pronouns. And this week has been really wild. Um, I've done a lot this week, which is a weird thing for quarantines, but uh, a particular moment of aliveness. Um, I have a, a friend who I haven't seen in a couple years who who lives the van life and is a tattoo artist um, and was going to be around for like a hot second and hit me up to be like, would you like a Quarantimes tattoo? And I was like, you know, I would. And so I uh, got this sweet little bat friend on the first day of FEMS what yeah so okay. I, and it was like it's like really bad view right now because it's shiny because i just cleaned it but and this little fruit bat eating some fruit whoa that's pretty alive because i uh wouldn't have been spending money on a tattoo otherwise but it was like a sweet tender friend thing where i got to like reunite with a bud and it was on the full moon and it was right before opening ceremonies it was a good time yeah we love like a literal time stamp on the body of joy and friends and also fantastic art work craft there well chef's kiss indeed abby hey abby not abby bland other abby hey um, hey good morning good afternoon i just rolled out of bed um a moment of alive um i use she her pronouns um and a mo moment of aliveness i enjoyed this week was um moving mid pandemic which i was not looking forward to uh but a good femme friend of mine helped me like carry in like two beds and two mattresses and a big ass couch and i just felt like very like powerful and in my body and also like loved and supported by my community yeah, that part, I agree. Oh, the, I've, I've done the two person, one mattress up the stairs type thing. You are strong. And yes, yes to muscles flowing, but also filling your apartment with friends and with good furniture. I hear you. Yes, thank you. Um, Christina, hey. Cool, using the chat. Thank you. Can I read it out? Is that cool, Christina? Okay, Christina says, um, my apologies, I am Christina using they and she pronouns. A moment that made me feel alive is reaching out to a friend who I had a falling out with, with um, and they responded that they were thinking of me last week and I would like to talk about the past conflict in order to repair and recontinue our friendship. Wow, I received this text before beginning this workshop. Oh, my heart goes out. Friend breakups are so painful and like I'm like all my heart juices are like going to like salve and bomb that that relationship that I hope reblossoms in a way that feels good for both of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Christina. Um, I have Duffy. Hey, Duffy. Hello. Um, excited for this workshop. A moment this week I felt alive was yesterday when I went hiking and didn't bring my headphones. And then when I got to the summit, I sat and I painted with watercolors for a while. Um, and then like went straight into my first FEMS workshop. So like that whole experience was just so tender and recentering. Oh, wow, they yeah. them, sorry. <laughs> no, thank you, Duffy. I love the wombo combo of aliveness, like a summit of a mountain and watercolors and FEMS workshops. Wow. Yes, perfect, alive sandwich. Um, Ricky, hey, Ricky. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm Ricky. I use she they pronouns. Um, I'm 
currently moved. Uh, so I'm no longer, so I used to be in the Bay Area and now I'm near the Sierra foothills in the US. So that's like, let's see the Miwok land. Uh, big change is happening. But I think that moment of aliveness for me has been, there's been a lot of like praying mantises like appearing around the, the property where I'm at. And so recently I like had to move one out of my room and I was like holding it and I was like really just deeply like afraid of it. But it's also like, I'm so much bigger than this like bug. And it's like, I'm sure it's terrified too that I'm like holding it. And so it's just like, I don't know, like a lot of like thrill coming from that and like realizing that there's so much like aliveness around me and like that making me feel alive. Yeah, connecting with our little our little bug relatives. I agree. And that there is other living, breathing things besides ourselves in the world and feeling connected to those. Yeah, alive, alive, alive. Thank you. Um, Michelle. Hey Michelle. Hi, I'm Michelle Solello. Um, I lived in New England almost all my life and I just moved to Campbell, California about a year ago. Wow. Um, but I went to Northeastern, so I know Boston very well. Um, I had a moment of aliveness yesterday when I wrote a poem about my ancestors. I actually connected with all four of my great grandmothers. Um, I have all their pictures and I know all their names. Um, so I wrote a poem about their attributes based on my grandmother's attributes and some of the stories that I knew about them and just sort of intuiting um, what they were like and, you know, being really grateful for the attributes being passed down to me. Wow, that's gorgeous. We love lineage. We love ancestral memory aliveness. What a gift to have those pictures. I'm so glad you have that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. LJ. I just arrived. I'm sorry. I'm late. No, that's okay. Hey, LJ. It's so good to see you. When I so saw good you. to see you too. LJ hosted me last year for FEMS. Yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah, I was just asking people um, for their names, their pronouns, any access needs they, ha they may have, and one moment of aliveness they felt this week. Okay. Are there more people going? Can I have Yes, do you want to wait? I can, I can yeah, come back. Yeah, I need to think about the last one. You got it, okay. Thank you. Um, Sarah May. Hi, um, I'm cooking things right now, so I'm keeping my video off, but um, I'm Sarah May. I use she and they pronouns. And actually, you know what? My moment of aliveness was like playing music last night for films, and I thought I was gonna be nervous and I just had the best time. I had so much fun and it made me so happy. I really, yeah, it was great. I felt spirit, I felt the divine, it was so great. Um, yeah. Yeah, yes to cooking and also yes to like moving past nervousness into like only joy and bliss and like connection with other people through music. Uh, I'm also feeling that, that right now, I was feeling so nervous to start this workshop, but as soon as I see you all lovely folks here, I'm feeling like, yes, filled, fold, fold, fold. Um, Cool. Who haven't I touched on yet? Uh, Lila. Uh, I think I might skip, maybe, if that's okay. And yeah. it's actually pronounced Lilia. Oh, Lilia. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Okay, thanks, Lilia. Um, who haven't I talked to? JC. Hi everyone, my name is JC. I use they them pronouns. Um, I was actually just in the sun before coming to see all of you and that felt really good. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been outside a lot this week because I get anxious going outside these days, but it felt really great to be in the sun. And I'm just eating lunch, so I'm sorry my video was off, but I don't want to be obnoxious. <laughs> That's okay, we love the sun's warmth, that good vitamin D and some yummy foods. Thank you, JC. Um, if you haven't if I haven't touched on you yet, do you mind turning your camera on or like giving me a, oh, LJ, are you ready? Okay, you got it. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm LJ, they, them pronouns, and um, I have a new puppy. That gives me lots of joy. What? New puppy? Did, did I just do, were you able to see her? Yeah. Oh, sorry, what was that? Were you able to see her? 
Did I do? This? Yeah, we saw. Oh, so okay, sweet. Good. Didn't even bark. So calm. So yeah. cute. She's really great. Uh, it's exhausting, but great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Taking care of like a small being, but also like that small being loving you back. Yes, aliveness. Agree, agree, agree. Um, any other folks that I haven't like said hello to yet or wants to, it's okay if you don't want to say hello. Hi. Hi, I just wanted to say hi. Um, and I got to go outside and see some friends who I haven't seen in a while. And the leaves are starting to turn where I am and it made me really joyful. So, hi. I'm wow. and I use she, her pronouns. Oh, and can you say your name for us? What do you mean? It sounds like the opposite of way nice, but with an H in the front. Thank you so much, Way Mean. I appreciate it so much. Um, anybody else that I haven't spoken to yet that wants to say hey? Cool. Awesome. Thank you all so much. I'm so stoked to like be just like in this close proximity so far away. Um, I'm going to do some screen sharing again. Bear with me while I have to do some in and outs of um, this. Is it, is it cool? Can everyone see if I just keep it on this like this mode without full screening it? Cool. Cool. Okay. So uh, I just want to touch on some of like the base foundations for this workshop. Um, has anyone ever heard of like trauma theory or the window of tolerance some people may have from um, doing any kind of work like this? Um, but basically, I want to start off this workshop by talking a bit about the window of tolerance. Um, I don't believe in this theory because I think whenever white men come up with something in psychology, I don't trust it. Um, I don't, I think that there, like, we shouldn't have a window of tolerance sometimes. Like, there's zero tolerance for oppression. Like, there's zero tolerance for violence. Um, but specifically, when we are feeling stress and anxiety in our bodies, I want us to be able to connect to that. I don't want us to have to tolerate it. Um, but at the same time, when there are moments when we're actually feeling like we should be safe, but because of past experiences of violence, past experiences of oppression, um, our bodies have been so accustomed uh, to going from this state of like um, tolerance or like feeling neutral and safe to actually feeling unsafe super quickly. Um, and that unsafeness kind of moves in and out of what a white man would call hyper arousal or hypo arousal. Um, hyper arousal um, is kind of this feeling of being super anxious, panicky, um, maybe angry, frustrated, racing thoughts, racing heart. Um, and then hypo arousal is feeling like really slow, tired, um, brain foggy, um, can't really uh, bring ourselves to be motivated to do anything. Um, and that comes from a place of like feeling like we can't actually make any changes in our life. So we might as well just shut down. Um, and hyper arousal would be kind of be like people would call it as like fight or flight. Um, and hypo arousal could sometimes be called as like, uh, like freezing or a freeze response, um, which I think that femme people in particular have been socialized into a freeze response because we have never had the opportunity to actually like succeed in fight or flight. Um, and like we know that we've been trained and socialized into that. So I want you to take this with a grain of salt. Um, but the reason why we're talking a little bit about this window of tolerance is because when we're trying to ground our body, when we're trying to feel pleasure, we want to acknowledge when we are in a space of fear and how we like interact with pleasure in our bodies, I think depends on where we're at fear wise sometimes, whether that fear is like happening um, like actively in the moment or if it's a fear memory that is being triggered and brought to the center. Um, this window of tolerance, um, graphic is like a little bit more complicated but really what i just wanted it to show folks is that like you can move from like being hyper aroused and feeling super anxious to being like hypo aroused and like super low um feeling super uh immobilized and um tired and like you can move like in and out and all over those spaces so um if you feel like you don't connect to any of these things, let me know. I'm like super stoked to talk more about it and learn your own theories. Um, I'm a disability justice advocate. I, I'm like a bit anti-psych um, as a social worker. So to all like psych survivors out here who like this may be like hard content, like I'm here, I'm with you. Um, I, uh, I can appreciate that this is like not the content we need all the time. But 
I do want to give us an opportunity to ground. Um, and grounding, the purpose of grounding is to, if we're talking about the window of tolerance, is like if we're already outside of our space of feeling safe, is to move back into a space of safety. And then mindfulness as a practice is to um, increase our ability to feel safe more often because we're, we're encouraging ourselves more regularly to remind ourselves of safety. Obviously, if you're not in a safe circumstance, like if you're in a shitty home situation, um, you're like not getting the resources and the funds that you need, like it's like these grounding and like window of tolerance opening things, like it might not be the right time for you. And like your body is doing what it can to protect itself. And like the same thing applies for like any type of pleasure, whether it's a with someone in a relationship or like your own experience of the world and the sun, like it's okay if like today is not the day for you and like six months isn't the day for you either. Um, but we're gonna give it a shot today to like move us from that space of like possible fear into a space of more close to the ground. And the purpose of that is to also connect with our senses and resist capitalism. Like, I don't know about y'all, but I have been like, go, go, go on Zoom because like now I'm accessible at all times to do work. Um, and having an opportunity to rest um, is especially hard right now. Like rest that feels restorative and not like rest that is like numbing or checking out. Um, so I want to do like a quick grounding exercise with folks. Um, if you want to sit comfortably, however like comfortable is for you, I don't believe in like sitting up straight. Um, but if you can like have your hands or your feet touching something that is like closer to the ground, um, that might be helpful. Um, and I just want us to start off, if you want to be close your eyes, that's cool. If you don't, that's okay. Um, just like imagine the face of someone you love and someone who loves you. It can also be something, it can be an animal. Um, and imagine that thing being so stoked to see you, that person being so stoked to see you after a long time and like what their face looks like, what your face might be looking like to like be greeted by them. Um, and now like having them and like their energy and their aura in the space, I want you to start by thinking about like the very top of your head um, and like focus on for what I would call tinglys. Um, it's like when you're so attuned to the top of your head that like you can start feeling your actual nerves like buzzing. So start with the top of your head and breathe however feels good. Don't need to breathe any particular way. We're not trying to change anything. We're just trying to feel our body. And then from the top of your head, if you can imagine like little like fairy fairy speckles or glitter like going down to your temples your eyes your cheekbones your ears then down into your neck and throat your shoulders and here at your shoulders if you can try to stop holding them up imagine the earth is holding you up instead and then those tingles are going to go through your arms through your forearms into the tips of your fingers, into your stomach, into your hips, into your legs, your quads, your knees, your calves, and then finally your feet and feel from your feet, the soles of your feet, if you can, if you're touching the ground, feel them connected to the ground, or you can also just imagine the ground. And then think of your body as one electric thing, just like pulsing, 
that like glitter or fairy dust is like flowing and moving from the top of you to the bottom of you as one unit without trying to change anything. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. All right. Yeah, okay. Um, I wanna do one more thing also for folks, um, cause sometimes connecting to the body is hard. Um, I've never done this before, but I've always wanted to try. If you can unmute yourself, I want us to like all laugh on purpose, like not at anything in particular, but just like kind of like make yourself laugh um, and like listen to other people and like watch other people in the chat like laughing. Um, and I wanna see how that, how that goes. It might be super creepy, but I wanna give us an opportunity to like actually bring joy, um, even if it might feel forced at first, like to the four. So um, on three, we're just gonna start laughing. However, like do your white lady laugh if you want, like do you like your grandma's laugh, do you like your boyfriend's laugh, your partner's laugh, whatever. Okay, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> okay, 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 maybe weird, maybe not, but but you know also our laughs are experimental my laugh changes all the time um and i want to like give ourselves like opportunity to, like see our laugh is like something that's like evolving and changing and like influenced by other people and like welcome laughter into the space today that being said guess what everyone today is not about surviving it's not about thriving but it's about being spoiled spoiled rotten okay I, <laughs> my idea from this comes from Tourmaline, who's a, a black trans activist and her friends for her um, 30th birthday were like, go fund me to get Tourmaline a pink birthday Benz. And you know what? She deserves it. She deserves her pink birthday Benz and she de deserves ease and plushness and pleasure and frivility and joy and luxury. And as people who are gender minorities or people who have experienced violence, like we deserve to be spoiled and not just constantly in a state of, of fighting to survive or just like barely thriving, you know? So like, I really want us to like um, embrace deliciousness embrace extraness today because like everyone should be able to have access to more than we have access to right now. Um, I hope that sits with folks. Okay. Um, we're going to start also with like a little quick self massage um, before we get into the writing. Um, just start with like the tops of your temples if like you're able to reach that space with two fingers and just like in small circles, give yourself like a little bit of a rub in circles, yeah. And like the pressure you want isn't going to be like super uh, intense, like only as much as it feels good. And then you can work those circles up across your, uh, up like with your hairline and just engage slowly to the top, to the crown, good. And then like down the middle of your forehead, above your eyebrows. Yeah, we love, we love the what the fuck line in the middle. Get that. Then going back down over the arch of your eyebrows, right to where your eye sockets are on the sides. Down again over where your hairline is. And then find that spot where your jaw connects and like give your jaw a little bit of massage. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a person who grinds their teeth at night. I'm an anxious person. So like getting a little bit in there. Open your mouth if that feels good. And then under the ears. And follow the hairline to the nape of your neck. Massaging. The nape of my neck is my favorite part to massage. I get big tanglies there. And you don't want to go like in that middle spine section, but on either side of it, still with two fingers. And then just go, follow that down the nape of the neck. all the way down. And if you're a person who's on the computer all day, then you can take three fingers and find that like back trapezoid space 
and then you're gonna squeeze it a couple times, like almost like you're making a tent with your hands and just squeeze that three times. One, two, three, and then you're gonna rub it out. And find the spot where there's tension. You don't wanna go too hard, but just rub out wherever would feel good. And if there was some place that felt delicious that you wanna to return to, you can stick there. Yeah, give your neck a roll if you need to. Give your shoulders a roll if you need to. Um, I highly encourage everyone to like massage as much as they can. I'm a person who like lives with chronic pain, but I also have vulvodynia. Um, and if any of y'all have like, you know, genital ouchies, um, like leg massages, inner thigh massages has been really helpful for me. Um, massage balls like this guy right here or this guy right here, um, highly recommend, or a Theracane. If anyone's seen one of these, um, to like, if your partner is like too tired to like dig their elbow into your shoulder or like just like not around, um, this, these guys really have been helping me out. Awesome. It just fell off the chair. Don't, don't worry, we're, we're good. Um, so I don't know if anyone's read Pleasure Activism. Uh, like if you can put like a hand up, or, like a thumb up emoji, Pleasure Activist. Yes, cool, awesome. So for people who haven't read Pleasure Activism, it's by Adrienne Marie Brown. Um, and she calls us to consent that is centered in pleasure and says that the first step of consent is turning towards our own desire. Um, and Adrienne Marie Brown calls like our like most consensual place when we are experiencing the orgasmic yes. Um, and of course my friend, my best friend Tui, who's asexual is like, uh, never the orgasmic yes. Uh, instead, we're gonna do the euphoric yes. The euphoric yes, the place that will increase are alive this and following the moments when there's resistance in your gut tuning into that listening to that and knowing that that's a signal that something needs to change and maybe some people might say it's unrealistic to like feel like this aliveness this euphoria at all moments in time but i really do think that like aliveness doesn't have to be like happy all the time but like aliveness is like feeling connected to yourself is feeling like you can make a decision that's not from a place of fear but like from a place of asserting your needs and like knowing those needs will be respected and i i would argue always like aliveness is like fighting for justice But Adrienne Marie Brown also asks us to like explore finding balance in the things that give us pleasure and also the things that are misunderstood and manip manipulated by racial capitalism. So like drugs, sex, sugar, alcohol, like how do those things that actually are like not inherently bad things, but like also very pleasurable things can make us feel alive um, within the boundaries we set for ourselves. Yeah, so I'm being wary of time. Because I always go over time and I was so sure I was going to be shorter on time. So I'm going to skip this small section. And I just want us to start by reading a poem by Morgan Parker, Lush Life. Um, I'm going to read it for the sake of time. And then we're going to move into the prompt so that we all have an opportunity to write. Um, so this poem, I think, really touches on desirability, the politics of desire, but also your own pleasure. Lush Life. The most beautiful hearse I have ever seen is parked on my front stoop, perched hands folded for six to eight weeks, twinkling like a siren, a new idea of love. Trees are planted but don't exist yet. They are leaning non-existent into us. A trough of hearts meets me in the anxious sun. I could rot here, something like the Holy Spirit pours over your bruised ice. There isn't anything more, more to say than holy, beautiful men never looking upon me. I take music self-stirred and sleep alone, curve into the morning like an almond, my shoulders lush as romantics. You wash up on a bar stool, smooth heartache, black sand. Yeah, is there anything that sticks out for people um, from this poem? You can post in the chat things that they really enjoyed. You can also like just turn your mic on and let me know.
Yeah, curb into the morning like an almond. For sure that one stuck out for me. Thank you, Angie. The first line, yeah, <laughs> totally, I agree. Yeah, thank you so much, Sin, for posting. I take music self-stirred and sleep alone. It does feel like a landscape. Yeah, absolutely. I think like it feels like a landscape because like there's like these like dotted um, typographies or like cartographies of this landscape, but also like it feels like I'm tasting something um, like bruised ice and black sand, an alternate universe of feeling. Yeah. I'm trying to locate the poet locate the poet and feel like I can't totally. Yeah, Sarah May, if you could let me more about that, I'd like to know. Sorry, I was taking a little bite. I like agree that it feels like a landscape and I feel like I can locate the poet like emotionally, like I can kind of understand hmm. what they're like where they're at emotionally. But there are a lot of things in the poem that just feel like gestures like gestures toward something and not like a really tangible thing. Like the most beautiful hearse I have ever seen. And also saying like, I could rot here. Mm. I have questions about what the here is. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think like Morgan Parker does a good job sometimes in terms of like balance between um, like critiquing desire um, critiquing what is lushness, what is exoticism, um, but also like this place of um, being a black woman who just like wants to like chill at home and like smoke with friends and like enjoy herself by herself. Um, so I think like there's like a mix of like grief and mourning, but also like sol like solitude, also like privacy, seclusion, like this is just for me, you get a glimpse through my curtain, but behind it all, I promise you, like this lushness is all my own and like nothing that you can have. That's kind of what, what feels like it touches for me. I encourage you to read like more, more of Morgan Parker's work if you can. Um, today, like I want us to find these like specifics of, of, of deliciousness, like these specifics in terms of like um, a landscape, a food, um, a touch, um, a moment, that is like all of our own. Yeah, self-soothing, Abby, I, I agree. Like, um, but even like the moment of like her being like perched on, like sitting on her front steps, like watching this, like while like people are walking by, like feels very private and like to herself. And I think like when we are getting in touch with our pleasure, um, like, like Adrienne Marie Brown says, it's like getting in touch with our like private desire and like our, our like most like small, but like close to the surface. Yum yums. Does that, does that, does that fit for people? Um, if this poem doesn't fit for people though, I appreciate uh, Sin saying that we have a little bit more time. Um, so if people are okay to stay till um, 3.30, I'm happy to stay till 3.30 as well, especially for people to read their work. Um, yeah, yum yums, great. Thank you, Jenny. Um, I just want you to write a super quick poem, maybe for like two, like not a poem, a super quick list of decadence deliciousness, indulgence, mouth-watering, skin-tangling, pupil-widening aliveness, whatever it is that brings you those things. And we're just going to write them down in a list for two minutes. Okay, cool. All right. All right, I'm going to play some music in the background, but time is going to start now.
okay, okay. I'm interested to see what people um, came up with. If you can post in the chat, maybe like one of the delicious words, um, the decadent, the skin tingling um, moments that came up for you. Um, you can post it in the chat. I will be happy to read it out loud just while other people are like finishing up their, um, their lists. Um, and I encourage you to keep writing if like the moment comes to you um, ready whenever you folks are to, for me to read off your, your, your words. Music and neuron harmony. Thank you. Yeah, he mean that's a great, great neuron harmony. Love that. Figs and honey, unplanned sleepovers. Yeah. Unhurried kiss. Whew. Yeah, that like slow, soft partner smile, swimming in ponds, oversized warm sweater. Splitting a bottle of wine, super ripe fruit. Yes. Mango juice, the pool and the moss. Yeah. Doorbell when your lover arrives. Clean and cold sheets. <laughs> Birds screaming for sex, but really, it's music. I agree. Dark chocolate bars. Yeah, and men, yeah, okay. Yeah. What I'm noticing is, and like what I keep finding, even myself when I talk about my own lusciousness, my own decadence, is like food is just like a quick access to like a, a very sensory experience. Um, nature is a very quick access to sensory experience. Um, water, um, temperature, but also like people that we love. Um, and I encourage you now in the prompt that we're about to do is we're going to write an ekphrasis of aliveness. And for people who don't know what an ekphrasis is, an ekphrasis is a poem in which you uh, take a piece of art, possibly an image, and you describe it in vivid, vivid imagery, but also at the same time you make commentary about it, about your life and how it connects to you. So I encourage you to use your own visual images as ekphrasis prompts. So go through your camera roll on your phone through your Insta feed saves. You can Google image something. If you just like want to see like a picture of a sky, it's up to you. And I want you to choose an image of aliveness and write an ekphrastic poem about that delicious image, that pleasure that that moment brought to you. Um, Cause I think sometimes, as, me especially, I take all these pictures and like I don't post them anywhere. I'm horrible with Instagram or like they kind of like get lost in the feed and like I don't really connect to that memory. So. Um, Writing a poem about that, um, about that experience helps me to connect much more because um, I'm writing those details down as opposing to like passively absorbing the details. Yeah, thank you, Sin, for um, putting that in the chat. Yeah, Katie, so just writing about another piece of art. Um, and the way that you're writing about that piece of art is like through very vivid, vivid imagery and description. So kind of like how we're talking about um, aliveness being like these very specific moments, these ju the juiciness of it, the yum yum nature of it. Um, yeah, you're, you're so welcome, Sin. We're, we're trying to like capture all of the juice, like, like scoop all the juice running down your chin and like lick that, lick that all up in this poem. Cool. So we're going to do that for 10 ish, 10, 15 minutes. If you have to hop out, I totally understand. I'm notorious for going over time. So I appreciate you all. I'm going to put music back on again um, and let's do this.
Okay. Hello, hello, hello. All right. So are we ready to get started again, everybody? Yeah. Okay, so for people who do have to go, I wanna honor your time. Um, I have shared the slides in the chat. Um, here I have some more information about mindful masturbation. If people wanted to access this and try it out, it's like a list of things you can do if you're a person who masturbates um, to like explore and experiment with pleasure in your body. Uh, Sin just said in the chat, they'll also be in the syllabus. And there's also a trigger rope map for people who are interested in kink or just like exploring even their own boundaries in sex um, that you can access after um, in the syllabus or just like from the um, slide link itself but for right now uh do people want to share i'm curious to like taste people's little poems um i think we have time for maybe about like i'm gonna escape this so we can get out of my out of the screen sharing i think we have a time for about like maybe like five ish six people um are people into that how many people would like to share you can also post in the chat if you want to share Awesome. Thank you, Angie. Yeah, if you want to go first and give it a shot, I'd appreciate it. Um, I also apologize if people heard me saying like, oh shit, it's because I, uh, I am currently on my period and bled through my pants. So here we are at home, free bleeding, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for, for bearing with me. So with that being said, Angie, let's go. Yeah, um, this is based on a really cool morning I had in June, back when I could still sleep over at a friend's house. Uh, yeah. Sleep has already buzzed through me. Came sweet and sticky like sap or midnight. The honey of the moon has left us cocooned in dream dust still, but we are as awake as we are alive. My chest is bound for myself, bound to you all. I could live here, I say, as bedrock, as soil, as the seed. You smile in suckled orange, nod your speckled head. The, mos the mosquitoes won't bite, you say. Not now, not today. They know us to be true. We will all share this love, this flesh, all of our summer fruit. Oh yeah, I love me a summer's brood. Thank you, thank you so much, Angie, for warming us up, for being the first person to tell us what their, their sweet nothings were this evening. Um, is anyone else wanting to share with us a little, a little peek into their, into their pleasureful moment, their pleasureful world based on their image? You can also drop the image in the chat if you want to, it's up to you. Um, yeah. Anyone, anyone else into sharing? Katie? Katie and then, is it Michelle? Michael. Katie and Michelle, oh, sorry, I didn't see that. Katie, please tell us, tell us. <laughs> so I don't know if I did the, like the structure of the poem right. So I guess like, I'll read a part, but I also, Okay, I'll just, I always do a disclaimer every time I read because I'm always so nervous sharing like really, like freshly written work, but. We got you. My lover's hand sits on my shoulder and mine on his knee. The silhouette skyline fades in the background as our joy outshines every landmark. Our clothes do not match, but our energies make up for it. Pink lace cups pour dripping on me and gray and black checking the whole, checkering on the wholeness of his skin. Mm -hmm. So it's like a photo, like. This actually was like two weeks ago. It was me and my partner. We went to a wedding. So this was our first time getting like fully dressed up and the entire time we've been dating. So like beautiful photo and yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, Katie. Uh, yes. Yeah, so we want more than the look. We want to know the feeling behind the look. And you gave it to us. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Michelle, so stoked to hear from you as well. Hi, this is my image, which happened to be next to me 
It's a very sensual icon of the goddess Freya. Oh, with her, yeah. With her two cats. <laughs> She's my favorite goddess. Yeah. So my poem is her long braids clinging to her firm exposed breasts, her skirt revealing muscular thighs, magical cats cuddling close, falcon cape cascading over her sensuous skin, her face confident in the desire for pleasure, majestic in her compassionate radiance, acknowledging that pleasure is sacred, powerful, generous, essential to new life. Stimulating my energy body, she dwells inside of me. Freya, let me ride your chariot led by cats. Bring me new love. Yeah, yes. Uh, we love us a sexy spinster, as my asexual best friend would say. Uh, <laughs> yes, cat ladies everywhere and beautiful gods. Thank you, thank you, Michelle. That was gorgeous. I appreciate it. Anybody else want to share? You can also just like show us the pic that you chose in the chat. Tell us about it. Say one line. Say how you're feeling right now. Ricky. Yeah, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Ah, uh, so it's it, it's very obvious in the first line, but I take a thirst trap on my front porch. I like the way the sun reflects on my bare chest, a voyeur's dream. I'm a shy girl, but nothing stops me from taking this moment. I woke up 30 minutes before it was taken, but you can't see that. I am happy to be alive, but you can't see that. Mm. All you can see is the licks of light, the gentlest of guides. No one is awake, just the sun and I, two flares. I perceive her and she perceives me. So we must both be alive. Both must be a beating animal. But here I am just waking up. Maybe we are both narcissists. Call it a collaboration. Call it meeting a lover. I bring my body, you bring your mouth. Ooh, yeah. We love a flirtationship with the son who is also your wing person in this situation. Yes. Thank you, Ricky. Yes, every line, I agree. Thank you, thank you for folks who are commenting and witnessing. Anybody else want to tell us, share their poem, tell us about their image, tell us about their poem and their intention? Did you achieve something you like surprised you or even like one thing you liked about what you did? Hey cuties. Hey. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna read cause I'm still kind of chewing on this. This happens to me a lot in workshops where a door opens and then it's like, there's so much inside that room that I wanna like go explore for a while before mm -hmm. I invite people into it. But I'm gonna pull up the picture. I'm doing this on video and I'm showing you my phone because this is not a picture that's on the internet. And I didn't wanna like join the Zoom call through my phone so I could then post it in the chat. You know how it is. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, cool, scrolling, awesome. Um, but the, the picture that I chose was, um, we did like a hang in my house because I live in a house with a bunch of queer cuties in like a big funky art house. Um, wow, so a dream. We, we threw a, like a, a summer equinox like queer fairy party as an excuse for, for each other um as an excuse for us to like pretend like we could still have parties and like go outside and stuff and it was the first time I had like put makeup on in a really long time and I felt very hunky and hot and I had a glitter mustache and it was like a uh like a queerness um ode poem is where we're going so that's my 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 moment of decadence is my glitter soul patch shout out to them yeah and also that palette blues <laughs> yellowy green oh yeah tropical um reminds fruit punchy 
on <laughs> Fruit Punch <laughs> Makeup. Your drag name. Oh my God. Thank you. <laughs> it should be yours, perhaps. You, you coined it. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Emil. Okay. You're muted. You're muted. I'm muted. I'm muted. I'm muted. I'm muted. Okay, I'm saying, okay, we can do maybe one or two more people before we're done done. Yeah, Chris, Chris, Chris. So, thank you for the encouragement. Um, so I found a picture in my camera roll of um, my garden, which is like just like um, flowers, like native to this region that I planted from seed. And it was the first year I've done that. Um, so it was really exciting. Um, all right, so wildness in the garden, distinct greens climbing through each other, buds and dead flowers alongside one another, bees sleep and forage, moss and mushrooms under the leaves shelter, wind and rain shift the delicate stalks and they find new ways to be. I live for sensual decadence as a gardening poem. Well, it looks like we lost Cass. Oh, snap. The poem just, it took her out. <laughs> well, hopefully they'll be back in just a moment. Hope y'all are feeling refreshed after that. How's everyone feeling? I'm excited to dive into some of the, the slides about like um, intentional relationship to your body and masturbation and self-love. Yeah, those slides are awesome. I'm excited too. And yeah, what great resources. Um, and to have more shared language around something that we don't talk about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a great workshop, stunning. Everyone's talented and beautiful. Absolutely. Giving me all that garden realness. That's hilarious. Ready to write, read, read self-love. And I hope everyone's going to, there is the, another workshop at four, right? Another workshop block. And then finals, 6.30, right? Woo, exciting. Anyone else looking to share their poem? I'm going to try to reach out to Cass as well. I, I could go. Uh, I don't know who is speaking, but I would love to hear it. <laughs> oh, I Abby, Abby with no last name. Ooh, mysterious. Let's hear it, Abby. Uh, okay, so this is my picture. Maybe I'll, I'll show it to you all. And I think kind of like Katie's poem, it's a, it's a picture of my partner and I um, in Spain. Uh, yeah. Uh, where you and I collide, everything is pink. As the photo shows, the lights themselves were red and gold. Color theory, no match for this connection. I sink supported to your chest. Relaxed and reclined, even as my dimples light up with delight, head spinning to try for a taste of you. If my neck was strained, I couldn't tell or care, and anyway, you rubbed it for me later. You cradle me in your arms and caress me with your gaze while controlling the camera with confidence, caring for so much, so well at once, making it all look easy. Please let us linger in this rose-colored love. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. A high level of vulnerability in this is slamming. And we just got a little word on Cass's situation. Their laptop died from all oh, Hi, I'm right here. Oh, I'm you're back. Sorry, folks. It's amazing. Hey. Hey, yeah. Bad tech day, everyone. Just a bad tech day. I'm so sorry I missed the, that little sweet nothings from a couple other folks. Um, I really, I'm going to go back in the chat and take a look. I'm, I'm so sorry about that. But thanks, everyone, for holding on and holding tight. Um, was there any other people that still wanted to share? I can go. Yeah. So I wrote based on a photo from when I was at the Adirondacks a few weeks ago at a ship deck. Mm -hmm. um, it's always been like me to see a boat and run towards its deck, whether or not it's docked. That day, the clouds were tearing at the seams with the weight of the rain. I could feel their strain in the atmosphere, 
and I remember that time 15 years ago in the elementary schoolyard, dancing, inviting the rain to come and join, and that childhood joy, the same kind that's streaming through my, through my veins now. I want to jump the fence, take the wheel, guide that boat out to sea, call to the rain to follow, so seawater meets rainwater meets tear water, and the holy trinity of a worship all my own. Oh, seawater meets tear water meets rainwater. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for conjuring that for us right here and right now. Yeah, Ricky's saying, I want to jump the fence. I agree. I'm a big fence jumper. Um, jump the fence when you can, when it's safe. Um, of course, of course, for us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think, folks, that that leads us to the last ends of our time. I, I want to honor people who are hosting this and need to jump into their next workshops. Um, but for everyone who came today, I really hope that you took away a little bit of something sweet and something full of um, tingling and tastes. Um, like I said, the workshop will be available on the schedule. It has all the prompts, the links, as well as uh, mindful masturbation and uh, trauma mapping for folks who wanna do that work in their own time. And please do message me if you have questions about any of those things. Um, I'm completely available over Instagram or you can send me an email. Um, but until then, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you wanna just like post one word in the chat as a checkout super quick of like how you're feeling, I'd love to see and to read. And when you post your word, you can just um, give me, blow a kiss and, and leave our space today. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So I'm looking at the chat, I see glittery, I see warm, reinvigorated, relaxed, serene, sweetness, tender, energized, inspired, lovey, yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, I'm so glad that I, we brought a little bit of calm and a little bit of light to your day. I'm stoked for the feature uh, at the finals tonight to see Charlotte Boissy and to see um, Rachel McKibbins. Um, but until then, have a lovely festival and I'll see you all in some time on another virtual world platform, time and space. Take care and I hope the rest of the day is kind to you. Thank you, Cass. Thank you, Emil. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Bye. You. Thank you. Bye. You've been great. <laughs> Thanks, Sin. Totally. That was really awesome. And Polly, I think we're we're finished up. An awesome workshop. I have to reach out on Discord. Oh, thank you. Uh, should I be on the Discord too? Do I need to do that? <laughs> you want to be? Well, I can show you the links. I feel like I, I kind of know what it is. Oh, I just can't believe my computer just completely. <laughs> I was that okay? apparently well. <laughs> People were like, "Wait, let me stop the recording. This is hilarious." Um, stop recording.